All right, what's up, everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning, and in this video, we go to some reinforced concrete design. In particular, we're going to talk about design of singly reinforced concrete beams, and hopefully, by the time that we are done with this video, you'll have a feel of how the process works, and maybe you'll even be able to explain it to somebody. To start out here, our goal for any structural system design is really to to satisfy all the strength and serviceability limit states, and so hopefully, you know what those are. In particular, the goal for a singly reinforced concrete beam is to select is to select the area of steel in terms of number of bars and size of bars and placement, the width of the beam and the depth to steel, this D to the centroid of the steel, and satisfy satisfying ACI code requirements. At least that's the code we're going to be using here so that we can ensure safety to the public and to the users of our structural system. And I want to emphasize this, the strength requirements. Those are things like phi mn greater than or equal to mu or the design moment strength get greater than the ultimate moment that could be applied here. The, the design shear strength greater than or equal to VU and even the design axial strength greater than or equal to the internal axial loading. But in this case, because we're focusing on beams here, we're, we're not going to worry about this right here. We're going to assume that our structural systems have only internal moments and shears and we want to design it so that it satisfies those conditions. Now in its rawest form, beam design could literally be a guess and check. Right? You could just guess a B, guess a D, guess an area of steel, and then analyze it and see if it satisfies your requirements. But that's not a very efficient process. It's not an, that's not the engineering way, right? You know, you, you're not an engineer to just guess and check. So hopefully we want to come up with a better process. And that's going to involve things like, or considerations for the strain in the steel. And what we would like is to, to create beams that are ductile or tension controlled. And that means, according to the ACI code, Tension controlled means having the strain at the extreme tensile fiber to be greater than or equal to 0 0.005. And that lets you, what that lets you do is use a phi value of 0 0.9. And that gets you the most out of your theoretical moment strength here, this MN that would be associated with this, you know, this strain and stress profile for a singly reinforced beam. But what that involves is trying to target a specific reinforcement ratio, rho target that is associated with a strain that's greater than or equal to 0 0.005. And so what we want to do is utilize a process that will that will help us achieve this. Now at the center of this process is the basic design relationship. You might go and look at your textbook. Depending on the textbook you look at, there's slight variations of the process for designing for a singly reinforced beam. But again, at, for most of them, and if, probably all of them, at the core of it is the dis basic design relationship for flexure. And at that, with this basic design relationship is the reinforcement ratio here. And so here you probably have seen the basic design relationship for flexure here. You're probably getting all dizzy right here because I'm moving this around so much. But check this out, right? It's this phi mn greater than or equal to mu. This right here, you know from the f stress profile or force equilibrium or moment equilibrium more specifically, if I take moments about the concrete centroid right here, I know that m sub n is ts times z. So really I can say phi times ts times z is greater than or equal to mu. And what I want to do is take this relationship and include the reinforcement ratio into it somehow. And so I'm going to show you how that's done. And so I have this ts times z. I also know that if my as long as I have a tension control beam or as long as my steel has yielded I know that the force in the steel is just going to be phi a s f y and if I have a singly reinforced concrete beam and I use the equivalent stress block my arm this z is going to be d minus a over 2 and again this is greater than or equal to m u and then what's more from equilibrium from equilibrium, let's do this in purple, equilibrium, you know, for a singly reinforced rectangular concrete beam, I well, this is true, TS equals CC is true for all cross sections that are singly reinforced, but, but for a singly reinforced rectangular concrete section here, I would have ASFY, again, assuming that the steel has yielded, and this would be using the equivalent stress block, 0.85 FC prime times B times A. And I can solve for A here. A is ASFY over 0.85 FC prime times B, and I can substitute that into here. And what that gives me is that I have now, with this substitution, I have phi times, oh, let's forget the parentheses here, phi ASFY 
times D minus uh, ASFY over 2 times 0.85 times F C prime times B. All this greater than or equal to MU. Now I told you I wanted to introduce the reinforcement ratio. The reinforcement ratio is equal to AS over BD and that reinforcement ratio you can see here I want I want this AS over BD to appear. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides here by let's see I'll, I'll divide both sides by B and D here B and D, yay, okay. And then I, oh, I see an AS over B here, and I want to introduce, so I'm going to multiply this by also 1 over D, which will make this BD squared right there. And if I do some basic algebraic manipulation right here, I would have phi AS over BD times FY, and I take this 1 over D and I multiply it through, I'm going to get 1 minus uh, Fy over 2 times 0.85 is 1.7 Fc prime times As over Bd greater than or equal to Mu over Bd squared. And then now if I make this substitution for rho, I get this very popular equation right here. This is going to be this. If I substitute for rho equals equal to As over Bd, I'm going to get phi times the reinforcement ratio Fy times 1 minus Fy over 1.7 Fc prime times rho greater than or equal to Mu over Bd squared. And this relationship here is the basic design relationship, but manipulated to include, include the reinforcement ratio and assuming that the steel has yielded. So this equation is often the, the basis of a bunch of design aids in the back of textbooks or you know different handbooks for designing reinforced concrete beams here. And what they do or what's done is that is instead of this whole term right here, here, this term right here is substituted for one single variable and it's rewritten like this phi times r greater than or equal to mu over bd squared so r is used I guess it's like a generic representation but r here is tabulated this value is tabulated as a function r is a function fc prime fy and rho as a function of those three variables here and so much value so that you can quickly estimate a BD squared if you have MU and you assume that it's going to be a tension control beam. But you know at, at the center I'm going to give you a process where you don't need any design aids here and that's that's true in general because all you need is a calculator to to really compute this this R value. So the reality is the design process for singly reinforced concrete beams here is uh, uh, is centered on this equation and here I'm going to give you this outline of the process that I follow here. So first and foremost is to is to estimate the beam weight. And that is literally a guess, okay? Based on experience, whatever you want, you know, if you're not sure, guess 500 pounds per foot. Guess a number. Or you don't have to guess, you can just guess zero and then you're going to have to update and verify. But the reason you're going to estimate the beam weight first is because you need to calculate an MU value. And so two would be to do the structural analysis to get MU and VU. And this would typically involve shear and moment diagrams or whatever else you've learned or whatever computer program you want to use here. And then once you have that, so this, these two, comp the, these two steps are really correlated with this portion of the equation right there. And the next thing that you're going to want to do is estimate or guess, estimate a reinforcement ratio, a row target. This is what you're shooting for in terms of ductility. And so if you've watched a, a vid my video on the on the reinforcement ratio or maybe you have a you've looked at it before, the reinforcement ratio is related to the the strain of steel using this relationship right here 0.85 FC prime over FY times beta 1 epsilon C U over epsilon S or T actually epsilon T in this case epsilon T plus epsilon C U here and if you're using the ACI code these become 0.003 and so if you want to target a, a beam that has a tensile strain of epsilon t equal to 0.0075, you just plug in 0.0075 with beta 1 and then the, you know, the compressive strength of concrete and the grade of steel, and then you'll get a row value associated with 0.0075 uh, 
uh, tensile strain. And, and this, this row is based on you know, similar triangles and the equilibrium equation for a singly reinforced beam. And if you, if you haven't seen the derivation before, I think I have a video on the derivation already. So now you have this reinforcement ratio, you have material properties, and once you can estimate that, then you're going to use this whole relationship here. You've got rho, you've got an Fy and Fc prime typically specified already, and you're going to use this rho value that you've, you're assuming or you're targeting to estimate Bd squared. So the next step is to use, is number four here, is one, is four, let's keep it blue right here, four is to estimate or uh, determine, estimate BD squared based on design relationship. And, and then you can try to proportion out what you can determine, you can select really, select a B and a D, select a B and a D. And normally what's done in reinforced concrete is to try to select a D over B ratio that's approximately, you know, anywhere from 1.5 to 2.5 ish. But, you know, I've seen things like up to three, uh, just depending on the depth of the beam that you needed or wanted right here. But that's, that's usually an economical range around two ish, right? D over B about two. And so you select the B or D. So that's literally a, a guess and check. So you have this, you know, requirement for BD squared. And then depending on what your value of B is, here's the D value. And you just, you know, you just put in a, a list of, of numbers for the width of the beam and see what D you end up with. And then you select the B and D. And then after that, you have an area of the steel and you can determine based on this right here, this D over B ratio, which is, or this BD that you selected, you can determine five or six right here a required area of steel as required and then you can select then you select as right here and that just means all you got to do for this this as required is equal to row target that you established at the beginning times the b and the d that you calculated and so this equation this basic design relationship was really important for these two steps. Now you're just using the definition of the reinforcement ratio and the B and the D that you selected to determine an area of steel required and then you want to 7 would be to select size and number and place you know, satisfying ACI requirements, right? Satisfying ACI requirements. These are things like which I won't detail here, but there, these are things like row min, right? The minimum area of steel that you need, uh, cover requirements, depending on what your structure is exposed to, and just other considerations that you, that you would have in terms of detailing the cross section. And once you've done that, you know you're pretty much done with the design. You have a B, a D. Uh, you've got an area. You've got a size and number of bars. And what you need to do is verify that this cross section you know it's always a good idea to verify verify phi mn is greater than or equal to mu or at least and and the ductility and ductility ductility meaning that it's tension controlled or meaning tension control and after you've done that right here then if you've covered shear already or you understand what shear is you want to with this design you want to check Really, this next part is to check. So I have eight. Oh gosh, how do you do a nine in the Roman? Oh, I think it's like this. Okay, so here is check shear. Check phi mn. Oops, not phi mn. Phi vn greater than or equal to vu of your design of design. And then you'd be done with the cross section design. All right. So hopefully this video was helpful in giving you an overview of the process and. Uh, um, and so we'll you know look forward to another video where we do an example problem. All right. See ya.